All right, welcome back. It's video 27. Today we are actually going to talk about how you can unwrap and lay out UVs. Um, one of the most important things to understand is how the UV systems work and how we actually lay out the planes in the UV uh, unwrapper and how that can affect the way an object looks. In front of us right here, we have six different layouts for the same crate. UVs are an art. They're not a science. Every time you do a UV for a different object, it's different. And you're going to build it um, based on what sort of constraint you're looking for. So first things first, you'll notice that I use checker maps and that all these checker maps are slightly different. Ideally, what we would want is perfect checkers, like we talked about before, without any distortion, as well as as small as we can make them. Now, you can tell just by a quick glance that this one here, UV5, has the smallest checkers. That means it is the highest resolution image. The way we did that is we actually just use one image on all of the sides. So the trade-off for having such a, like a really high detailed, high resolution image is that all of the sides have to be identical. And you can actually look at that if you go in the UV editor. I should pull this up. I need to reset texture list. And this is nine. So you can tell that all I did was split the edges here and then lay it out with one large image. Now, all of the images that you see all of these are the exact same resolution. They're all 512 by 512. However, you'll notice that how we see them, um, what sort of resolution they are is different. So you can see all the wood lines in this section here, whereas in this other one, like here, it's very blurry on the edge. Now, in this one, which is three, I believe. Yep, this is three. On the third one, you'll notice that the edges are really blurry and that's because each one is getting its own unique section of the UV. That's really important because if, if you want to do any sort of like specific like for instance if each one of these has a number on it or a different you know serial number or some sort of craziness um, you could definitely show that but it takes up a lot more of the space so that means each one of these edges each one of these faces has to have a a portion of that 512 uh, image and you can't overlap them if you want to have unique uh, unique images so so therefore this section here that used to take up the entire 512 by 512 image is now relegated to one you know basically one ninth of that distance so like 100 and you know a third by a third, so it's like 120 or something like that, um, 140 something uh, pixels by 140 pixels. That's a big difference from 512 by 512, and that's what we have to deal with. So each one of these is slightly different. So the first one, you'll notice, is moderately detailed, and you can see the checkers are all relatively even. That's pretty good. If the checkers are all even, that means that there will be no specific portion of the image of the uh, object that is way blurrier than the other, which is the problem with this one. For instance, this one, the edges are extremely blurry, but the middle section's okay. That those sort of trade-offs are what you need. For instance, if I've got something that's going to have a different face on each side, I'm going to have to make make decisions that will allow me to get those faces on each side. Um, reset texture list and show it. So in this one I overlap two of each. By overlapping two, especially one on each side, you'll never be able to see two sides that are identical. No matter how you look at it, the other two sides that are identical will be hidden while you're looking at one. So that makes it less likely for you to be able to see it. And what that does is it allows you to give you 256 by 256 pixels for each side. And then all of the edges here are going to be slightly different because they're all overlapping a different part of this quarter of the UV. So this, in a lot of ways, is a good sort of middle ground because you've got each face here each one of these faces is getting roughly 256 by 256 pixels and all of these are sharing but not exactly identical so each one of these 
frame sections will be slightly different. You won't be able to see any that are identical. All right? Compare that to whoops. Let me maximize this again. If you compare that to one here on the end, this one, each one of these faces is identical. So for instance, notice how we've got like pointing up, we got this corner, same sort of process. This section here, they're all, all these are going to be identical. So if you look closely or even not so closely, you can tell that that knot hole is at the right, the exact same spot as that one and that one. Now it depends how, what you're, what you're working on, like how much detail you want and how close you think your users are going to use or look at this. Okay, this image, this image as well, has exactly the same on every single side, even down to like the edge here. So, and it all depends how you lay out each one of these UVs is going to give you a different layout. Now you may sit, you may look at these and be like, well, it's not that much of a difference. And you're right, it's not that much of a difference, but it is a difference. For instance, if you wanted to have six sides. So six different sides. So let's say you're doing a die, right? So you need to have different numbers on each side. Um, the closest you can get, the most detail you can get is here. So that means this edge, though it doesn't really need this much detail, is going to, you might as well use all the space that you have. So there's that texture list there. So each edge is going to be different and you're going to get a really high resolution density on there. And each one of these, like I said, has a subtly different UV. Um, you can go ahead and check these out if you want. Uh, it's part of the file, uh, and I'll make sure that that is available in the comment, or not in the comment section, but in the description. You can download this file as well as all the other information from the Google Drive. So as we actually get ready to lay out these UVs, you have to understand what we're actually doing. And there is usually a lot of confusion on how this works. See, what we need to do is we need to take each one of these faces and break them and flatten them so that they show, or so that they show, um, so that we know that we can fit them into one square. And it has to be square because the materials um, that we use for game development are always going to be square. So it's going to be even one pixel by one pixel, or two by two, or four by four, all the way up to. 2048 by 2048 or 4096 by 4096, although no one really uses those yet. Um, generally, the sizes we use are 512 and 1024, uh, respectively. So uh, these particular images are 512 by 512. So the idea is what we need to do is we need to look at how these are laid out. This is the one that actually is laid out where all of the images are the same. So what we need to, do, what we're doing is projecting onto each individual side, and then stacking it all on top of each other. So I created this simple animation to sort of show kind of how the process works. We need to separate this, this, all image, all all the pieces into their own actual sides. So. I broke this into the six sides of the cube so that we could sort of get a look at how it looks or how it seems to function. And then what we do is we planar map them from their own perspective. So for instance, these will be, will be planar mapped from X and then we flatten them together so that, and then we stack them on top of each other kind of like that. And that's what the actual image looks like. We also need to uh, flatten them out that way as well. So eventually what we want is something, an image that looks like this, flat. And if you look at the UV for this object, reset, you can see that I already split it. Reset texture list. There. You see that that's what we actually have. Now there's extra space here in the UV, in the material, and you can see this in the Photoshop file as well, which I'll, I'll include it on the drive. Um, but you can see that this is dead space here. Now, I usually fill the background with whatever color is close to the edges. So in this case, it was like a dark brown because we're dealing with mostly wood. So ultimately, what we need to do is understand that this is how we lay this out. Now, to actually lay this out, 
and UV something like this, you've got to make sure that you're understanding the process of unwrapping. So let's go ahead and stop for now. I hope you've got uh, a better idea on the different ways you can lay these images out or lay these uh, crates out. Um, and I hope it's starting to congeal in your mind how UVs work. It's basically the idea of having a bearskin rug, right? A bear used to be a 3D object, but now it needs to lay flat because it's on the ground. So you slice the bear and you pull its skin off and you lay it out flat and it's creepy, but that's the same process we're doing with all of our objects. We are creepy taxidermists that cut people and boxes apart and lay them out flat. Yeah, sleep on that. I'll see you next time.